Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. Every week we bring you news and information you can use on your real estate transactions. Today we got some great information for you. This segment I have our Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush calling in and we're excited to have him on the show. I heard him speak um, back at the Texas Association of Realtors Convention a few months ago. Did a great job. Great information. He's the Commissioner of the General Land Office and after being elected Commissioner Bush took office on January 2nd of this year and he earned more votes than any other statewide candidate on the ballot. So he is a he's a native Texan born in Houston. So we're happy to have him on the Houston Real Estate Radio Show. Welcome to the show, Commissioner Bush. Good to join you. As Texas Land Commissioner, um, you've worked to ensure that, that Texas veterans get the benefits they earned and oversee uh, investments that earn billions of dollars for public education. I know you used to teach and um, you manage state lands to produce, you know, that uh, to produce the oil and gas that's helping make America energy independent. I love that. Um, Commissioner Bush also watches over the Alamo and preserves historic archives at the General Land Office that date back to the Spanish Empire. That's some old stuff. You have a lot of responsibilities. So I want you to, to talk about your role and the responsibilities that you have um, at the Texas Land Office. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you and, and your listeners over the course of the uh this interview and, um, and, and engage uh, the community, the greater Houston area, uh, as it relates to what we do here at the Stephen F. Austin, here in Austin every day. Uh, you, you've outlined four of the core areas that we practice. We've got 21 functional areas um, that we've developed since 1836. This is the oldest state agency that you'll find in Texas. The General Land Office was actually created before the Governor's Office Wow. Uh, was created uh, mainly with two principal roles that have expanded to those 21 that I mentioned. The first being clearing title, which is important uh, for your real estate listeners, uh, as you know. And if you can imagine a, a you know a sleepy republic at the time, one of the key responsibilities was attracting settlers and bringing new uh, Americans and folks from around the world to the newfound Republic of Texas. Uh, to bring their ideas uh, of innovation, their businesses, and their hard work to build uh, what has now become the most important state of the United States of America. Um, secondly, the office is created to honor military veterans, and that's a role that we continue to, to maintain um, here at the General Land Office. Um, as you know, there were hardy soldiers from around the country that helped liberate the Republic, mm-hmm. um, and to endow many folks um, in, in terms of a financial benefit for their military service, the uh, the land office was was created to help uh, manage those affairs. Since World War II, uh, this agency has issued billions of dollars worth of loans to military veterans. And so, of your military veterans that are listening, I encourage them to check out our website where we offer highly competitive, low interest rate loans to to military vets in partnership with the federal VA. Yeah, we actually did a show a few weeks ago um, with the Texas Veterans Land Board and talked about the benefits that they offer to veterans because it's it's great to put that in conjunction in conjunction with your VA loan when you're purchasing a home or land. I mean, but uh, I know they do a lot of home loans or or home improvement loans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we offer up to to twenty five thousand uh, dollars to to military vets to improve their homes and. After the Central Texas floods, of which uh, I believe some some counties just west of the Houston area uh, were impacted, yes. that will allow for military vets interest uh, rate free to um, to to take out home improvement loans as well. So uh, we're excited about what we're doing. Last year we had a record year and issued over half a billion dollars worth of loans for military vets. Uh, September was a record year. I think in large part because of our initiatives to go out there and market to uh, to the military community. But but uh, we're excited about what we're doing here at the General Land Office. We've uh, tried to, as I mentioned, this is the oldest state agency, but we're trying to implement the, the methodologies of the 21st century in terms of a daily practice, and I think we're making some changes. Well, that is fantastic. I, I know that um, right now your your dad, Jeb Bush, is running. Um, he's working on his presidential campaign. Are you playing any active roles in that? Well, I've been uh, I've been tapped by the campaign uh, to chair his campaign here in Texas, along with Speaker Strauss. Uh, we are the highest elected officials that will be supporting him and organizing the effort here. Uh, we just released about two or three weeks ago uh, a list of over 150 Texans 
that have stepped forward, uh, mostly elected officials that will be endorsing and supporting my dad. Uh, so we are we are trying to build the same grassroots team that we did in my campaign, where, as you mentioned at the outset, I've earned more votes than, mm-hmm. than any other candidate on the ballot. Um, but it wasn't because we, you know, raised, you know, money. It was because we we hit every single community uh, to the extent possible, which is tough to do in Texas, as you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big state. It's a big state. <laughs> a lot of land. Um, <laughs> but that's where I'll be helping out occasionally. You know, uh, I do uh, weigh in tonight. I'll be on Greta, Su- the Greta Van Susterns on the record to talk about my dad's vision for uh, our, the rebuilding of our military. I'm a military veteran of Afghanistan uh, yes. as part of the summer surge of 2010 and um, help out in that in that vein. Um, but also advise on on Western land management issues and, and oil and gas related activities. You have dedicated your life to public service, as you said. You've uh, you were in the military, and um, you've also been a school teacher, and now you're in public service. You've done a lot of different things, and um, I know you know just because of your family and and your your grandfather being president i mean this you've had a lot of attention um a lot of time in the public eye and have had to live with that and really dedicated your life to public service you have a huge responsibility with your current job what are your biggest challenges as the texas land commissioner i think my biggest challenge is to convey the important role that we play in serving texans every day you know i i i think it's the most important state agency here in austin that a lot of texans just frankly don't know about so Mm -hmm. I think just just advising the community and the public about what we do uh, to serve our military vets, to help our teachers with the funding necessary so that they can educate all of our children, Yeah. Um, make sure that our country's uh, energy independent and, and fighting back federal overreach and regulation, and maximizing revenues for, uh, for the school children out of Texas. So th- these are very important responsibilities, but I think the public needs to be more engaged, not only with our agency, but but overall, uh, in, in, the, in the political system. And so I'd, I'd say that's my biggest challenge. You know, um, it, it's been a lot of fun uh, managing uh, an agency with over 600 employees. Uh, there's certainly some, some daily challenges that present itself, but on a, on a larger scale, it's about getting outside of Austin, the capital city, and, and telling the message. I read recently where you were quoted saying that the Obama administration is composed of unelected bureaucrats who have an inappropriate vision of land management. Tell us about your vision for land management in Texas. Well, here at the General Land Office, we manage 13 million acres, which, uh, which roughly for your audience, <laughs> it's um, roughly the geographic footprint of the state of West Virginia. Wow. It's, it's, it's a massive footprint, mm-hmm. and we take this role very seriously. Um, over the course of history, this footprint has generated uh, tens of billions of dollars for education-focused activities here in Texas, K-12 through and post-secondary ed. And so when you have this administration through its Bureau of Land Management uh, overstep its bounds and uh, challenge the authority not only of the state's ownership of its assets, but private landowners and ranchers in the Red River area, uh, I was forced to file a lawsuit yesterday to fight back. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what we are calling for in our lawsuit is for sensible land management policy to say that the federal government needs to get out of the way uh, as it relates to, to private ownership and also state ownership. You know, Texas is unique. You know, I happen to be a part of the Western States Land Commissioners Association, and my friends in Nevada and Utah have roughly over 60, 70, sometimes 80 percent of their state's geography controlled by the federal government. Yeah. And um, here in Texas, we, we can't sit idly by why while the federal government uh, seeks to control more of our lands and so so i'm going to have to be in the courthouse and uh, and expend time and energy but it's an important fight and something that we're working also in washington dc with our senator uh, senator cornyn's office uh, in addition to uh, congressman thornberry to reform uh, these brutal practices can you we just have about a minute left can you talk to us a little bit about the alamo and the plans that you have for the alamo i know y'all are have some exciting things going on over there well from the real estate perspective i I can announce to you that uh and you'll be the first to know that we are acquiring the ripley's (laughs) buildings just west of the grounds of the alamo oh good for the museum we're well hopefully it will be the site of a of a future museum but that will be subject to a master plan that we are developing okay uh, right now with the city of San Antonio, but 
the, the state has committed $31.5 million. The city has committed $17 million to the restoration and the development of a master plan in and around the, uh, the vicinity of the Alamo grounds. That's uh, exciting. I've reconstituted an Alamo endowment board with folks like Red McCombs and Gene Powell and Ramona Bass to help me raise tens of millions of, of, of dollars f- philanthropically to help support our efforts. So we're really excited about the future of the Alamo. It's the most visited site. It's a source of pride for all Texans. But I think we recognize we need to do a better job. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I agree with that. And I, I think it's such a great landmark in our history. And I know the first time I went there, I was like, is this it? Is this all there is? Is this it? You know, there's so much to, just so much history that you want to take in. And um, it, it's just that one site. And then you're right there at the Riverwalk. So I think it'd be wonderful to have a museum and be able to tell more of the stories and be able to show more of the the, the, the um, artifacts and things that you guys can um, pull together. I think that it's so exciting. Um, I just think it's a great thing. I and mean, we have to, we have to remember the Alamo. So Always remember the exciting. Alamo. Very exciting. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing that. And if people want to to learn more about you and what you guys do over there um, in Austin, they can find you at www.georgepfortexas.org. Is that correct? Is that the website? That is correct. Fantastic. All right, georgepfortexas.org. And when do uh, when do voters need to get out to vote in the presidential uh, election? When is the when is it for here in Houston? We've got an early primary this year, so it'll be on March 1, but I encourage your audience to, uh, to, to register and vote early. That's always a great uh, privilege to have, and um, Texas will have a stronger voice than ever since we're right after Nevada and the early carve-out states, so I encourage uh, your audience to inform themselves on the issues and go out there and vote. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you coming on. It's so good to have you on the show. George P. Bush, we appreciate you calling in from Austin. He is our Texas Land Commissioner doing a great job over there. And just you guys have so much responsibility, so many things that um, that y'all are working on. So I appreciate your efforts over there and all that you guys do. Anytime. And, and you and, and the team are, are welcome to join us anytime here in Austin. We've got an open door. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors here on Houston Real Estate Radio.